times they played here. They're looking to get one here tonight. Duke out of the top 25 at the moment. Andrea, right now, Duke coming in a little healthier than they have been. And look at the lineups here tonight. Duke coming in with Filipowski and Mitchell. Whitehead, as well as Proctor. And you're going to get a look at Jeremy Roach coming off the bench in just a few minutes. Young up top. We'll swing here for Filipowski, who's averaging 15 points and 10 rebounds a game. Well, I'll tell you what, the fans are ready to rock and roll. One of the greatest openings in college basketball, being able to come here and see the Castle Guard perform. And they've been great early as the shot clock is down to two. Mitchell with the kick. Whitehead gets it off in time, and he beat the buzzer. And Derek Whitehead stepping up, knocking down the three ball, poised for a freshman. Now, Virginia Tech 11 and 8, but they are reeling. They lost their last one on Saturday, 51 to 50, to that outstanding Clemson team. The three pointers, like that one from Couture, not falling the way they need them to. It's such a big part of their attack. It really is, but I love seeing Hunter Couture aggressive to start the game off. Virginia Tech needs his production to be successful. Just got him back three games ago. Mitchell inside and tipped up and in. Staying right on top of the rim, Filipowski, with 17 against Miami. And a gritty win for them over the weekend. And that's been the surprise about Filipowski his freshman year. Everyone knew about his. Scoring ability, but his, his defense, yeah, his defensive ability and his rebounding have been spectacular. And he's put those in showcase the last two possessions the tip in and now the steal and finish. Lynn Kidd, among those who could have a big performance tonight, need him to. He's in the lineup for the Hokies. Mike Young getting him in there, the 6'10 junior. They're going with a bigger lineup. With the bigger lineup hasn't been successful. Duke off to a 7 0 start. If you're John Shire, you couldn't have asked for a better opportunity. Couture again off target. Filipowski with a rebound. He's been one of the better rebounders in the country all year. Off the iron by Whitehead. One and done there. And here's Sean Padula. Averages 16 a game for the Hokies. With the swing. The long one on the way. And switched in by Bazzilli. And a crack in the scoring column. And Virginia Tech needed that really to calm them down. We got the blackout in Castle Coliseum tonight, of course, but never the Blue Devils come to town. It's a big deal. You can see the nerves on the Hokies early. Young draws the double, trying to fight his way out of that. Whitehead trying to make a move, and that's going to be an offensive foul. <laughs> Let me bring in Dre Carter. Dre, the, the fact that Roach is healthy after missing several games with that toe and ready to contribute, that's huge for Duke. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. You know, Coach Shire said after that Miami win that this is the closest the team has been to being whole, being healthy, and being capable of who they truly are. He said they had defensive intensity, they rebounded with aggression. But assistant coach Chris Carrawell added during warmups that Miami, that's the game where they finally hit shots. They need ball movement and offensive chemistry today on the road. And the you know, they really haven't been shooting it the way you expect a Duke team to shoot it. Right. The struggles for Duke this year have not been on the defensive end. We've seen that over the past few seasons. It's been solely about the offense, and you never think about the Blue Devils struggling offensively as Young misses a wide open layup. Off of a nice find from Derek Whitehead. Yeah, but he commits the foul. John Shire, year number one for the 35 year old former Duke captain and All American. He has a chance with the schedule, Corey, the way it is, is setting up these next few to kind of get rolling. And Mike Young, year number four, as the head coach for the Hokies. Frustrating time right now, but remember, they were two and seven at one point last year in the ACC, and they won the ACC tournament. Getting it inside for Lynn Kidd and a quick strike. And if you look at the benches for both these teams, you see the Blue Devils coaching staff with their suits and sneakers on and suits and sneakers week. Virginia Tech chose to wear the black pullovers because it is a blackout. That's the only reason Mike Young, who normally wears a suit anyway, and his staff don't have on suits today. Over the top. Young downstairs got that one to go. Well, he only makes 72 percent of his shots. Yeah, exactly. He's pretty sure-handed. That's why it was so surprising to see him miss the layup on the last possession. But he makes up for it on this one. Mutz 
back downstairs. Again, it's Kidd. They want him to touch it early, and that's why. The Link Kidd has been in double figures in three of his last four games, including a career high 14 points three games ago. So he's continuing to progress. Yeah, he's playing his best basketball the season, the coaches say. Went in on the spin and knocks it down. Six seven freshman did yeah, a speak, smooth move. Speaking of progressing, Derek Whitehead starting to become more aggressive, attacking the basket on the perimeter, shooting the basketball well. The number two high school player in the country coming into the Blue Devils fold this season. Had some nice games at 18 against BC, 16 against FSU, so he can score. Get again, a lot of iron, but that won't drop for him. Proctor, the freshman, running the point. Filipowski again doubled up. Padula steps in, knocked it away. Bazzilli on the break. Padula on the attack, and he'll lay it in. Smart play by Sean Padula, even though the crowd wanted to see the three, putting it on the floor, laying it up, seeing the ball go through early can pay dividends for him. Much later in this game. Yeah, he had scored in double figures every game this season, except for the last one against Clemson. Proctor will lift it, barely got to the iron, but right back up and in by the hardworking Young. And that's what Brian Young really does. He is a great offensive rebounder, almost three a game for him. Top five in ACC basketball, and he continues to give Duke another dimension offensively. Couture. Dropping it down low, kid. Here's Couture straight on. Yes, sir, with the triple. Most impressive part for Virginia Tech thus far is Hunter Couture has already taken three field goal attempts. Mike Young wants him to be more aggressive on the offensive end. And defensively, too, as he bats that away. Mutz getting up ahead, tiptoes, and lays it in. And how about the Hokies right out of the gate a sour start but no longer it's a 14 to 6 run and another death by Padula flips it up there as he draws the foul Padula really active defensively they're getting those hands in the lane great response from the Hokies as we see Sean Padula not only playing the ankles, but possibly breaking ankles and dropping dimes here at the castle. Sonic cheeseburgers are made with. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And back in Blacksburg, back and forth we go. It's going to be that kind of pace tonight. We're in for something. It absolutely has. And you always call basketball a game of runs. And when you think about it, Duke started off 7 0 run. But just like that, Virginia Tech responding with a 5 0 run of their own after forcing four Duke turnovers. And the Hokies, thus far tonight, have five assists on their six made field goals, sharing the basketball extremely well. Padula will be at the line. He makes 84% to shoot two. The sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma. Had a rough one against Clemson, held to seven points in that one. He looks very determined tonight. Obvious, I'll tell you what, it's it's a great thing to be home. You think about Virginia Tech coming off of a three-game road trip, and they've had struggles on the road, getting Hunter Couture back and being able to come back and play in this building. And, of course, there's always going to be tremendous energy when the Blue Devils visit town. Okie's facing Duke for the first time since beating them 82-67 to in the ACC title game in Brooklyn. Last spring, Couture had 31, a career high. He was magnificent in that one. Filipowski turns and knocks it down. So smooth. Absolutely. I like magnificent as a word. I think that's the word to use to describe Kyle Filipowski, especially with his back to the basket, where he's been a difference maker for the Blue Devils who go zone on the defensive end. Filipowski about five times already. He's been rookie of the week in the ACC. That shot's going to go in a foul, too. As Couture got hit. Up and went high off the iron and in. Filipowski with the personal. Hunter Couture has a different look about him this evening. He's already taken four field goal attempts, knocking down his last two. 
three-point field goals, and this one making sure he adds one for emphasis, an opportunity for the four-point play. Missing the free throw. But the Hokies up 19-15. And is Couture going to have another one of those nights against the Blue Devils like he did in New York City? And a quick whistle here. Kip Kissinger calling the foul. 13-01 to play. That one will go against Boti of the Hokies. His first. Jacob Grandison, a graduate out of Oakland, California. End of the fray now. Roach driving it and will lay it in. And Jeremy Roach has become such a better player when he attacks the basket. He had a career high 22 points on this floor as a freshman in a game that his team lost, but he was spectacular. And of course, we talked about Hunter Couture and his confidence against Duke. Roach has the same confidence against Virginia Tech. Padula way downtown for the triple. Right now sitting at around 32% from three for the season. He's better than that. He absolutely is, but he's had so much responsibility as the point guard. Filipowski going in strong, follows his own miss, stayed right with it. But you can see a decided advantage for the Blue Devils. You got two Duke Blue Devils above the rim going after an offensive rebound. MJ Collins, a freshman from Mike Young into the contest as well. Here's Couture again. Oh my, he is off to the races. I think it's fair to say at this point that Hunter is hunting shots right now, Obi, and it's working out in the favor of the Hokies. Hokies five out of seven beyond the three-point line early. Mitchell back for Filipowski. He's going to try a long one, can't drill it. Big battle for the rebound, and Collins Played some heavy minutes for Coach Young this season. Picking off the rebound, rolling all the way in. Poteet will draw the foul. And that's going to be two on Filipowski. As the Hokies have gotten it rolling, As Jeremy Roach attacking the basket. He gets a bucket on one end of the floor. But Sean Padula has the answer. The three ball and Hunter Couture, of course, finding his range here at home. Hokies leading Duke 25 to 19. We check out the ACC standings. Clemson's for real, eight and one. Virginia's awfully good at seven and two. You look at the top of the league, and there's the Hokies way near the bottom at one and seven, remembering that they were two and seven before they picked off FSU last year. You and I were there in Tallahassee. That flipped the switch on their season. It absolutely did, and of course, our colleague. You know, college basketball expert Seth Greenberg said earlier this year that the ACC was going to run through Virginia, that Virginia and Virginia Tech were the two best teams in the ACC. And at that time, he was correct. And this Virginia Tech team still has a chance to be one of the better teams in the league. And being that we've seen them do it before, it would be no surprise to see them run off another 13 of the next 15 games. I don't think anyone would be shocked if they had a long winning streak in them. Under Coach Young, and you know they were 11 and one before they lost Hunter Couture for several ball games for about a month, actually. Yeah, and Hunter Couture, of course, plays such a huge role for this team, not only as a scorer but also as their backup point guard. Rodney Rice out of the lineup with the had finger surgery on Friday. He will not be available for the remainder of the season. Coach with the dish jumper on the way, and that won't drop off the mark by Grandison. Hokies, by the way, four and one against Duke in the last five meetings here in Blacksburg. So recently, success on this floor against the Blue Devils. And a shove there with 11.02 to go here in the first That's half as Katori hit the deck. Let's go to Drake. Well, Dave, I listened into that last Duke huddle and Coach Shire challenged the team defensively. He said, we're giving them wide open shots. He said, this is not who we've been defensively. We have to be aggressive on both ends, but it starts on defense with getting stops. Then we can flow into the offense. You know, Dre, when you hear something like that, how much do you think that being on the road plays a part in that? When you say that's not who we've been, they haven't been great on the road. Yeah, absolutely. There's a big difference. When you're at home, you sleep in your own bed, you wake up feeling more like yourself. Going on the road makes a huge difference. You have to have more of an intention on being who you are. You have to lock in. Home sweet home, certainly so far as Grandison's pass is knocked around. Mitchell picks it off and lays it in. 
But the Hokies feeling very nice here at home in the early going up 29 to 21. Hokies have not won a game since the 17th of December. A seven game losing skid. Couture thought about one there. OT, that's going to be an offensive on him. Too much of the body on the 6'9 junior. And that's just a smart play by Jalen Blakes, recognizing that he is outmanned on the interior by Poteet. Knows that he has to be able to take that contact as we look at look at the Blue Devils and what has happened with them throughout the season at Wake Forest, taking the loss, losing at NC State, losing at Clemson, one and three in ACC play on the road this season. And this is a very young team, OB. So it's not really a surprise that they've struggled on the road. Mitchell got it up there, banked it in. Right to your point, the freshman from Kansas City. Duke, of course, 10 and 0 at home with Cameron Indoor. If you look at the Blue Devil roster right now, it's it's a junior with two juniors on the floor with three freshmen, and you've got another freshman in Derek Whitehead checking back into the game. Padula, shot clock down to seven. Now down to five. Here's Kid. Shot clock at one. Well short. And uh, Duke with an opportunity to run a bit. Proctor forcing the tempo, and the Hokies get back defensively. And right now, if you're Jeremy Roach, you've got a mismatch. You've got to take advantage of it. Giving the basketball up doesn't work for the Blue Devils. Roach, long one, nailed it. That's a two-pointer, actually. Okay. Respect that. Again, whenever, as a guard, a point guard, you get a big on you like that, you've got to be able to get everyone out of the way, take advantage of the mismatch, and the fact that they're disrespecting you, Obi, with a big man guarding you at the point guard. Mom and dad, they were like, we prefer three, but we'll take the two. We'll take the two. It's fine. At least for, for this point in the game. Here's Padula beyond the three. Rolling inside. Nice dish for Kidd. Missed on the first one, and it came free and laid in by Bazzilli. Is, is Lynn Kidd going to look for an assist on I that one? I think you get one. Man. I would absolutely ask for the assist. Go right to the table and demand it. 31-25. <laughs> Bazzilli was seven. And Kidd coming out to guard, and Roach hitting the deck. This is just back. After missing a few games with that lingering toe problem, which actually goes back to November for him. Yeah, Jeremy Roach coming back into the lineup immediately gets the assignment from Hunter Couture, who Mike Young lets us know on a regular basis is their best perimeter defender. And so he makes sure he takes that on as we get to look at Joe and Carol, the Roach, Jeremy Roach's parents making the trip down from Northern Virginia to come see the young fella play. Now, they don't miss a game. It doesn't matter where they are. Portland, Durham, they're going to be there. Last year, all the way to the Final Four. Oh, they were they were in, in participation for that as well. <laughs> he was the starting point guard for the Duke Blue Devils, Coach K's final year. Shot clock to 10. Crowd wanted to walk there on Blakes. Whitehead gives it up. Roach on Couture. With a triple coming. But you see the difference in that move with going against Hunter Couture in comparison to having a big guy out there guarding you. Couture just makes it difficult on the defensive end. Downstairs, Bazzilli. Tough angle, but he made the shot anyway. Had to contort his body to get it off the window. And great recognition by Justin Mutz, knowing that his teammate was being guarded on the high side, the perfect pass delivery. Quick moving first half here in Blacksburg. The handoff for Whitehead. He's going to take a shot. Great rotation on that and a two pointer. And he's been aggressive. We saw Derek Whitehead knock down the first three of the game. Now coming back in, he has been aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. Well, the Hokies play fast moving games. We talk about that with Virginia all the time, too, because they don't turn the ball over. Here's Couture again, and it'll roll on in. He is on fire. Here in the first half at home. He has 12 points. He only had six the entire game last time out against Clemson. And you can see Hunter Couture is motivated by being home and more importantly about getting his team a win. 
Up on top and over it goes. The jumper won't fall for Proctor and the Hokies have it back. The Hokies playing smart basketball. High low action. If you're going to front, we're going to find a way to beat you. Grant Basile with the finish off a nice Justin Mustang. Customers get our best deals on all smartphones. That's right. But One thing that we are seeing from this Duke Blue Devils team this season is switching on defense. Watch Mark Mitchell at 6'8", defend Sean Padula at 6'1", at the top of the key, using his length, closing the gap, not getting beat off the dribble. And then as soon as Sean Padula picks up the ball, he closes out again. You've got great defense. Duke and John Shire switching more on the defensive end, Corey, something we haven't seen in recent years. We haven't seen a lot of them, but one of the things that John Shire is doing, of course, when you go out and you get the number one recruiting class in the country, you've got guys who expect to be pros. On that possession alone, we saw Mark Mitchell and Derek Lively both guarding on the perimeter. That's the thing they have to do in the NBA level. John Shire challenging his players to be able to do it now in college. Lively. 7-1 freshman playing some good defense coming off what 10 rebounds five blocks against Miami it was six offensive rebounds in that game and of course Duke needed each and every one of those to be able to pull out a victory the doula very casually lines up to three and that won't drop for him coming in at 16 points a game and Virginia Tech was chilly with the threes right away but they've caught fire they made four of their last five Here's Mitchell. Whitehead looking inside and a whistle down low. And that's going to be number two on Kid. And up next on ESPN, we take it to Waco. Number 17, Baylor squaring off against number nine, Kansas. Kansas have a couple of losses, taking a tumble in the poll today. Yeah, a rare two game losing streak for the Jayhawks. And no easy task for them later tonight. Roach goes down on the seat of his pants, almost lost it. Shot clock at nine for the Blue Devils. Thirty-six twenty-seven, Virginia Tech trying to snap a seven-game losing skid. Duke, Duke right now at 14 and 5, 5 and 3 in the conference. And Duke now back into the zone. But if you're going to play zone against this Hokies team, you got to be in account for all the shooters. And the interior passing, Justin Mutz, one of the best in the business as an interior passer in the ACC. And very unselfish. OT with the finish. Whitehead with a pull up off the back of the iron and Basili there for the rebound. Well, the Hokies looking very sharp. At home, and again they absolutely have to. Five minutes to go in the half. They just ended a three-game road swing, losing to Syracuse, Virginia, and Clemson. Even with Couture back in the fold, he rejoined them in that Virginia game. Shot clock down to three. That's tipped away. It's going to be heaved in midcourt, and that is a shot clock violation. So it goes back over to Duke. You're talking about Justin Mutz and his ability to deliver. But, you know, one thing is you're always a better passer when you use your eyes to be able to give some deception to the defenders around you. Justin Mutz looking on the perimeter to try to make sure that the, the defense watches all the three-point shooters he has around, pretty much looking everyone away from them kid on the interior. He's earned three degrees, and I asked him during the shoot here tonight when he was getting warm and he was – Lacing up the shoes. I said, are you going for the doctor? And he said, hey, not right now. I got some things to do. <laughs> but it is on a schedule. I asked him what Justin Mutz we were going to see today. Were we going to see the aggressive Mutz? Were we going to see the defensive Mutz? Or were we going to see the all-around guy? He hasn't been aggressive with his offense, but he's been passing to perfection thus far. Duke just one for seven from three-point land. Again, they've not been a good three-point shooting team, not by their standards, 32% for the year. Here's Mutz hopping into the paint, left it way short. He wanted a foul, but he was well defended. Mm -hmm. 
Roach trying to get them going. Whitehead will knock that one down. A three-pointer from the corner. The Rick Whitehead has been the bright spot for the Blue Devils on the offensive end of the floor today. As he knocks down his third three-pointer here in the first half. He has ten points. An eight-point lead for the Hokies. And that's going to go against Padula. That'll be number one on him, an offensive. So 3.33 to go here in the first half. And the Hokies with a 38 to 30 lead. The Blue Devils with the ball back here in a moment. Whitehead able to get two going from three point territory at last. Being the best takes hard work. It takes early mornings, planning, precision, sweat, sacrifice, and teamwork. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in their game. Old Dominion Freight Line, helping the world. Coach in the studio coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report. We'll consider what's wrong with Kansas as they're mired in a two-game skid. Might be that the Big 12 is that good. Yeah, right? Well, it's kind of an uninspiring start here for Duke. It is. They're shooting way too many jump shots. I mean, you look at that last jump shot by Kyle Filipowski, Seth. Just really casual from the corner. They've got to attack off the dribble and post, and they got to find Hunter Couture. Hunter Couture, let me tell you something. Everyone talks about the shot making. That's all part of it. It's the spacing he creates, his ability to defend, his toughness, his leadership. Totally changes the dynamic of the game with that. OB? Kev, thank you very much. How about that question that Kevin posed? You hear that, what, once every 50 years? What's wrong with Kansas? <laughs> I mean, but there's truth in that. Coach beyond the three. Here's Young trying to get a little closer on Basili. Inside with a hook, but no. Filipowski, another big rebound. Blocked from behind by Basile. Boy, did he recover fast. Well, and the Hokies' defensive effort has picked up significantly as you watch them make shots. And, you know, coaches don't like for that ever to be the case, that you're better defensively when the, you see the ball going through. But it is human nature. And right now, you see the defensive effort looking great for Virginia Tech. Mutt's going to start to look for more shots like that because he can really score. And he absolutely can. And again, Mike Young has to go to Justin Mutz way too often to ask him to be more aggressive looking for his offense. But once he, once he is, you see he's a big time scorer. Contact there and a shove in the lane. 232 left in the half. Vast improvement. Saturday at Clemson, 50 points in the loss. First half tonight. Already with 40 here in Blacksburg. And the foul will go on MJ Collins of the Hokies. Kansas and Baylor to come tonight after this game with Bouchambi and Jay Billis. Here's Roach. That one clanged away and picked off by Padula. So the Hokies up 10 on Duke. Couture has been quiet the last several minutes, but as a dozen. Filipowski out to guard him. Padula beyond the line. He'll fire it up and knock it down. That is a confident shot. Great offense beats good defense. Dariq Whitehead knew exactly what Sean Padula wanted to do. Took away his space, but Padula good enough to still get the shot off and knock it down. Hokies with their biggest lead tonight up 13. Big crowd and a blackout here tonight. Mitchell. Roach to penetrate and it won't fall. Foul here against the Blue Devils. Basile was trying to start the fast break as he went down. Well, here's our Big Ten ACC Super Tuesday doubleheader. We start in Champaign with Illinois hosting Ohio State at 7 Eastern. And it's North Carolina against Syracuse. Both games right here on ESPN and the app. Great opportunity for Syracuse, who, in my opinion, should be in that consideration for NCAA tournament bid. Of course, they've got a lot of work to do, but 
North Carolina hasn't been a great team on the road either. They've had the same struggles that we've seen from the Duke Blue Devils when they get away from the Dean e. Smith Center. So great opportunity for the Orange coming up tomorrow night. Young with the foul to put Bazilli at the line. 6'9 grad from Wisconsin. And off the back iron there, 13 point advantage here for the Hokies in the final 90 seconds of the half. Filipowski and he'll draw the foul in the act of shooting a three pointer. As he got hit on the arm. Vasily will pick up. That personal number one. OB, we say it all the time on the pickup games. Great offense beats good defense anytime, and that is very good defense by Derek Whitehead. He had his hands up. He was all over the basketball, shadowing the ball. But Sean Padula, with his great touch from beyond the arc, was able to still beat the good defense. A lot of Iron Duke with their first foul shot of the game, and three here for Filipowski makes 78 percent as a team. Duke makes 78 percent. It's something they do very, very well. If it comes down to a foul shooting contest, they're going to win it. A seven foot freshman. Kolopowski playing with those two fouls. John Shire going to get him out of the game right now. 119 remaining goes to offensive defensive possessions here at the end of the half. And right now, it looks like the Blue Devils are going to be in a 1 3 1 defensively. You see Proctor on the back line. Derek Whitehead going to pick up. But we've seen John Shire throw out a number of different looks defensively throughout this game. Padula. On the penetration, much jumping inside and blocked by Lively. A leading Duke by far in that category in block shots. But a foul on the play, and that'll put much to the line. But you're talking about a veteran team. You see the way Virginia Tech moves the basketball against that 1 3 1. This is the first possession of 1 3 1 that Duke has played, but Mike Young's team more than ready for it and moving the basketball well, allowing much to get to the free throw line. 67% foul shooter missing on the first one. Filipowski on the Time bench now. here. Prior three games, 63 points, 43 rebounds, three straight double doubles. He's had some freshman year. We'll be back for the final 107 of the first half. Closing minute here of the first half. Filipowski out for a minute. Coming back in, offensive defensive substitution by John Shire. Great move. Filipowski playing with those two fouls. Don't want him to pick up the third foul here. But when you get an offensive opportunity now off the free throw, you want to have your best offensive player back on the floor. Number two for Mutz. And missed them both. And Filipowski with a rebound, averaging 10 rebounds a game. Meanwhile, Duke Chile, just a little bit. They missed eight of their last nine. Whitehead has been the answer on offense so far for them in the first half. And a slam by Lively. Nice find from Proctor, who's done a much better job as of late running the point guard position, finding his teammates and facilitating. Good look to find Lively for the easy bucket. Meanwhile, for the Hokies, Hunter Couture has been the story. Mutz with a nice spin will lay it in. Under 20 to go before the break. Obi, I believe Mike Young may have had a quick conversation about Justin Mutz about being more aggressive down the stretch. Picked up six quick points here. He also has five assists. Belipowski way downtown. He's only 26% out there, but very confident on it. That one hurled up there at the horn. It will not drop the shot by Maddox, but Virginia Tech has certainly had the better of it here in the first half. And it's a great chess match between two very good coaches when you consider the way that they've gone about ending that half. Virginia Tech, 42 and 9, when leading at halftime over the last three seasons. Let's go to Dre. Part of the reason why we feel as though this Virginia Tech team will ascend back into the upper echelon of the ACC. 
68% shooting will help you to a 45 38 lead at halftime. It absolutely will. John Shire can't be happy about that going into the locker room, talking to his team who allowed 68% to happen on his defensive end. So underway in the second half, the spin move by Basili will be off the window. And Filipowski with another rebound. He's won the ACC Rookie of the Week five times already. He'll get the pass downstairs, gave it up nicely. Mitchell had it stripped. And Padula going up against the big there. Young will collect the rebound. But I like the attack by Padula. I like the fact that he challenged the big guy with adding that additional 10 pounds of muscle over the summer. He's playing much more confident and more physical. Whitehead with a nice pass cross to Proctor and he'll nail that three. Speaking of playing more confident, Tyrese Proctor has been much more confident since going back into the starting lineup as the point guard with Jeremy Rose sitting down with that toe injury. 17 points for him at Clemson, a career high. He's continued to get better each and every time out. Hughes Couture had an outstanding first half at a dozen points. And out it goes, and that'll be back over to the Blue Devils. They come in at 14 and 5. They have been the ACC's best rebounding team. Loki's trying to snap a seven game losing skid and do what they did last year really get rolling. Filipowski, yeah, got a good look and a feathery touch. He's such a matchup problem. You talk about it close to seven feet tall, but the ability to shoot the basketball the way that he does, he can also put it on the floor. Which makes him even more difficult to guard. The national leader among freshmen in double doubles. Months for Basili. Draws a lot of attention in the paint, but a nice touch of his own. 47 44. He has 11 to go with five rebounds. Whitehead down. Nice pass here for Mitchell. And it's tipped, but it's going to be Hokies basketball. Just getting started here in the second half, Thursday night, ESPN College Game Day, tipping off our coverage from Thompson Bowling Arena at 7 o'clock Eastern. And it's the rivalry that elevated women's college basketball in the 90s, UConn and Tennessee in Knoxville. Got a feeling my sist, Andrea Carter's going to be in the mix somehow or another with that big game going on. Mitchell down the lane and a foul. Basili going up for the block, but a personal. Now you think of those days with Pat Summit and Gino. And elevating it is probably an understatement because that was a point in television. It absolutely was. And you're talking about two of the names on. The Mount Rushmore of college basketball coaches, Pat Summit, Gino Ariema, John Wooden, and one Mike Krzyzewski. That's the four throughout college basketball. Mitchell makes one of two. Corey, you're talking about that rivalry between Pat Summit and Gino Ariema. That's the rivalry that I grew up watching that helped me fall in love with the game of basketball, and I will absolutely be there for that matchup. We've got a game day crew that will be on site. Studio, Rebecca Lobo, Carolyn Peck. We've got a great crew, Holly Rowe and L. Duncan. Jump out of the corner by Vasily won't go. Whitehead is hobbled, though. He was holding his leg, maybe his ankle. Wide open, Padula absolutely drains the triple. And Whitehead goes off very quickly to the bench on one leg. And he is in some pain. Tariq Whitehead, the freshman from New Jersey, he has been their offense for times in this game. And Whitehead going after the basketball, and you see just landing awkwardly on that left foot. Hokies by five. He has 10 from the corner. Oh, so sweet by Filipowski. Dropping in those triples. He already has 20 in this game. And cuts it to two along with nine rebounds on the doorstep of yet another double-double. And another collision and a whistle with 16.35 to go in this contest. 
Greek right hand still being tended to. Young man who had foot surgery back in August. Missed the beginning of the season. Hate to see him having to deal with this right now. Hopefully nothing major. Roach with that last foul, his first. Vizzilli trying to make a move on Mitchell. A collision again, no basket. And they're going to call a flop there. But here's the question. Who is the flop on? Is it on Basile or is it on Jeremy Roach? Because there was two guys right there in the mix. I don't know. John Shire's beside himself right now. Well, if it's called on Roach, John Shire has a reason to be beside himself because it was such a late call. Take a look. You see Jeremy Roach come over, and there is contact. Which means that it can't be, I, I can't imagine how it's a flop with there being contact on that possession. And I'm sure that's the same conversation that John Shire is having right now. It'd be one thing if there were no contact. Give you a look at the flop rule. Class B technical foul, one free throw. Padula hit that. No warning there either. Uh, to me, it looked floppish, but. Well, again, if there's contact, then I don't think it can be a flop. Because, again, now maybe you are saying that there's. You can say that it wasn't enough contact to make that happen. Oh, as Mitchell. Mark Mitchell was able to knock down the three ball. But at the same time, I think that could have been let go as a, no, a non call. I but you. either way, you don't call it after Bazzilli misses the layup. Right. No, it's the first tie here, 51 51. After the Mitchell shot. Man underneath is Mucks and a foul as well as he was hit by Filipowski. And that is number three. And it's normally Justin Mutz on the passing side of it, but this time it's Basile dropping the dime. Ooh, not as much contact as I thought. <laughs> yeah. I think they got it right. They just got it late. Yeah, <laughs> late. Take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch and Armando Baycott. Along with Caleb Love Filipowski, who's having an outstanding night here. Is that Wong of Miami? And to Quavan Smith, who had a scary incident, but ACC players midseason top 25 watch list. Yeah, speaking of scary incident, Derek Whitehead coming down on that left foot, immediately grabbing it, wincing in pain, and having to be walked off with the help of his teammate as he's. Trying to describe where the pain is, but being walked off with the help of his teammates. And wow. I hate to see this from a young man who's worked so hard to battle back getting on the court. And really has been having a terrific night. Mutz at the line. Justin Mutz, the senior. We came in the broadcast talking about this is the first time that the Duke Blue Devils have really been whole and healthy. Right. And to see you know, Derek Whitehead have to exit the lineup after 10 points in the first half, shooting the basketball really well, that's a tough blow for the Blue Devils. And 10 on the shot clock, a foul here against the Hokies. And that'll that's be number one on Mutz. Second team foul of the half against the Hokies. Duke leads the all-time series 51 to 12 against the Hokies. And we talked about the injuries to Quavion Smith. He is good to go. Practice today. Just got the update from my guy Seth Greenberg, who's on, on top of all things college basketball. Always is. Proctor with shot clock a factor down to two. Got to get it in the air. Got his own miss and put it up very softly for two. Tyrese Proctor, the freshman. So back to even. Big factor here in the Duke comeback has been they've been hitting threes after a chilly start. They're two for nine. Block downstairs, a battle for the rebound. And chasing it down the corner, Mitchell. 
Filipowski again. Man, is he cooking. Man, you said speaking of threes, you dialed it up. Kyle Filipowski taking care of business. And Flip now with 23 points, nine rebounds, headed for another double-double, which will be his fourth consecutive. And possibly another ACC <laughs> Rookie of the Week award. Yeah. Duke on top. Last time they had a lead it was a long, long time ago. It's like seven to nothing out of the gate, of course. Basili. Oh, look at the passing underneath. Maybe a little too much there. Yeah, way too much between just as much and Grant Basili. Somebody's got to get the basketball up on the glass. And speaking of looking for the right shot, Jeremy Roach finding Kyle Filipowski, the hot guy. Knocking down the three. On his way to a big night, Roach. No. It's going to be tipped out. And Duke will keep it with 13.53 left in the contest. And Proctor to put it in from the baseline. Filipowski off the fake. Proctor drives it and lays it in. A determined move. We are watching the freshman grow up right before our eyes for the Duke Blue Devils. Remember, Tyrese Proctor should be in high school right now. He reclassed up to join the Blue Devils, and John Shire is sure glad he made that decision. You betcha. Meanwhile, the Hokies have cooled off after scalding the Nets at, what, 68% in the first half. Not making as many shots. A foul on the floor with seven on the shot clock. That's on Duke's 15. Ryan and that's going to be number three on uh, Ryan Young. 13 fouls. And Lively back on, a seven foot freshman. And Young to the bench. And one thing the Blue Devils have succeeded in doing here is quieted the crowd. That's going to be an over and back. MJ Collins not recognizing where he was on the floor. The turnover. And again, Collins at that point, you know if you're getting close to that line, you've got to find a way to turn and throw the basketball back to your basket. And the inexperience for the Hope is starting to show up and making a couple of mistakes here is. Once again, they're going to foul Filipowski. Trying to slow him down. Good luck there, the way he's cooking. And the foul will go on Mutz, number two on Justin. Big time response by the Blue Devils coming out of the halftime locker room. Virginia Tech had all the momentum in the first half. But give John Shire's group a lot of credit the way they responded here in the second half. Mitchell trying to shovel the pass underneath, trying to hit lively, but out it goes. Duke on top, 58-53. Very few turnovers in this game. The Hokies are among the best in the country in fewest turnovers. They're number nine. Only about ten a game. But where do the Hokies go right now when they need a bucket? Who's going to be the guy? Kyle Filipowski doing a great job guarding Basili. And he hooks it in for two. But we mentioned it before. Great defense beats good offense every time. Basili the better on that possession. Jeremy Roach will set it up. Filipowski again. Filipowski going in strong. And boy, it hung up there for half an hour. Proctor scoots away with it. And another offensive rebound by the best rebounding team in the ACC. And now Duke with another opportunity here. Ten remaining on the shot clock. Lively with the give. Filipowski goes up. Almost made the shot as he went down and fouled on the play. With 12.04 to go in the half, it'll be months with number three. Let's go to Dre Carter. Thanks, Dave. Just got an official update from Duke. Derek Whitehead is doubtful to return with that lower leg. Dre, thank you very much. It's a big loss for John Shire, the way that young man has played tonight. And been playing throughout ACC play. The Blue Devils come into ACC to this game with only two players averaging double figures in ACC play. That would be the freshman Kyle Filipowski at the line and this young man, Derek Wrighthead, averaging 10 points per game. We see the injury once again. 
Scary area to be grabbing is the castle guard now on point here. Filipowski with a miss would reward everyone here with bacon. No bacon. Flip says no parts of that. You will get no bacon here, not on my watch. Oh. Fifty-nine, fifty-five, under twelve. Kid hands off for Katori. He's been a non-factor here in the second half. But we go back to what Andrea was talking about previously. You see Derek Lively stepping up, guarding Hunter Couture. Swished out of the corner by Collins. Fifty-nine, fifty-eight. Mitchell short. Collins comes away with it. Kid on the entry. Spinning. Basili has it slapped away right to Padula. Once again, you've got the big fella having to guard on the perimeter. Basili should be able to win this matchup. With five on a shot clock. Man, the shot. He'll be at the line. Back and forth we go. Hokies by one. Sonic blockbuster. Texas and Tennessee coming your way. Came right down to the bloody end last year. Tennessee's won seven of the last eight. That's Saturday, six o'clock on ESPN. That's a Dickie V game from Knoxville. That's also a Rick Barnes game. You're talking about his former school versus his current school. One of the best coaches that college basketball has seen when you consider Rick Barnes. And you have the ability to see a big time matchup. Texas is really good. A top 10 matchup in this blockbuster. Really looking forward to that here. The Hokies back on top 60 to 59. And the Duke Blue Devils without a key man and the freshman Whitehead out of the game with a lower leg injury. And OB coming into this game, John Shire told us he wanted to keep Jeremy Roach in the mid to high 20s as far as his minutes were concerned. With the two day turnaround after having to play on Saturday and not practicing for two weeks, how would Jeremy Roach be able to respond? If Derek Whitehead out, we may see Jeremy Roach for the remainder of this game. How will he be able to hold up? And Shire said he played him a little bit longer. Roach in his return the other day against Miami. It might be even longer tonight. And a whistle with 10.45 to go here. And Virginia Tech on top 61 to 59. Saturday, 27 minutes, but 14 points. He's in terrific shape, so no problem there. Tonight, already 20 minutes. Bazzilli picks up his third foul. Yeah, but being in, being in game shape is completely different, you know. And again, not practicing for two weeks, trying to get back into this mix. We'll see if he's capable of making the plays that he made at the end of the Miami game. Proctor, the open shooter, can't stick it. Collins with another rebound. Collins is 6-4, but he can get up there. He absolutely can. Mike Young loves him, feels like he's going to be great for the Hokies into the future, but asking him to do a lot right now as a freshman. Padula trying to penetrate, swatted away by Lively, but a whistle before the block. And that'll be number two on Roach. Jeremy Roach reaching in and this is a play where you have to recognize you've got one of the best shot blockers in the game right behind you. If you're Roach you keep your hands out of the mix allow Derek Lively to come over and clean that up. Padula really good at the line at 84 percent. Hokies have not been they were just five for ten at the foul line before that. Didn't shoot free throws great against Clemson either a big miss down the stretch. They could have used that one point in a one point loss. Yeah, lost 51 road. to 50, right? On the road at Little John, yeah. Clemson just continues to churn out wins, right? And doing it without their point guard, Chase Hunter out, but Brad Brownell still finding a way for his team to win. Tops in the conference. Here's Mitchell. Filipowski can't give him any room. He dishes here. 
Fire and Lively with the slam. So Kyle Filipowski is doing everything right now. But he has the ability to play off the bounce. That's what makes him so special. At seven foot, he can handle the basketball and more importantly, play make, not just scoring on his own, finding his teammates. Vasily up top. Now down low. Kid couldn't handle it. On a turnover, Filipowski. Look at the big guy run the floor and lay it in. Euro stepping his way for two more. And we've talked about Kyle Filipowski and all the things that he can do. Well, he's showing us even more the Euro step to the left hand finish, showing off his dexterity around the rim. Now the freshman putting the Blue Devils on his back tonight here in Blacksburg, Virginia. Shot clock at six. Down to seven, it's going to be a double dribble, and it's going to be a turnover. Kyle Filipowski showing off his ball handling ability to cross over and then to drop off to Derek Lively for the finish and then getting out on the break, the Euro, the lefty finish. Doing it in every facet of the game right now for Flip. Filipowski, another triple. Granison, little battle for the rebound. That'll go against him, though. Look at these numbers now over the last four games for the big guy. And you're talking about including a 28.15 rebound effort versus Pittsburgh in that mix. One of only three freshmen to ever do that. The other two guys were the number two pick in their respective NBA drafts, Marvin Bagley and Jabari Parker. Under nine minutes left here. Collins, great dish, Basile with a finish. But it was a great screen that allowed Filikasi to get held up on that screen. John Shire wants to give his guys a break. He's going to have to use his timeouts wisely throughout this stretch. We talk about a number of guys playing extra minutes. 65-63, the Hokies. Living with eczema, we're used to the Dandy shaping up here. The 12th ranked Virginia Tech women's team is part of our doubleheader Thursday night over on the ACC network, squaring off against the outstanding Duke team in the second game at 9 o'clock Eastern. Meanwhile, Kyle Filipowski, the 7 foot, 230 pound freshman for the Duke Blue Devils, is putting on a show and some pro style moves, really on both ends of the floor. Dave, Dave, you mentioned those pro-style moves, and I feel like Corey is leaving the people at home hanging because, Corey, you watched Kyle Filipowski in high school. What were the expectations of him then, and how has he sort of turned himself into a prospect for the pros now? Dre, I don't believe the expectations were this high for him. He's improved significantly since he's been at Duke, but as he continues to play as well as he has and show off all of his different skills, Jeremy Rose gets the tough bucket attacking the basket. Filipowski continues to climb the draft boards because one thing people are seeing that he can do is not only offensively put the basketball on the floor, make plays, but he can step out and guard defensively, and that's what makes him so valuable. If you play a guy like this at the center position in the NBA, he is going to be a matchup problem for so many different teams. Kid on the high post. Shot clock now down to six. Padula wants to fire up a long three, but no. Rebound loose in the corner and picked away by Collins. Took it right off the deck. Here's Basili. Into the paint. Strong move for two. That's tough. Tough bucket by Basili. We talked about Jeremy Rhodes with the tough bucket on one end. Basili doing the same here for the Hokies. Well, he's got 20 points. He had 26 and 10 in the loss at Syracuse. So he can be a major factor offensively. Proctor wants Young. Yes, sir. Ryan Young with two. And this game is looking like, even though we've had some very good three point shooting, it's looking like it's going to be one in the paint. Right now, we see Filipowski and Young dominating on their end. Basili doing the same on his side. 
Mark Mitchell getting ready to check back in here for the Blue Devils. Here's Couture. Got it. A three pointer as he comes back to life. My bad, Hunter. My fault, Hunter. My bad. It'll be one on beyond the three point arc. <laughs> My apologies, Hunter Couture. Well, when it's him, here's Filipowski again. Short this time. Couture with a rebound. And Couture missed about a month with a bad elbow. And man, did they miss him. He absolutely did. They missed him significantly. And right now, Hunter Couture is trying to do his best Kyle Filipowski impression and put his team on his back, similar to the way he did in the ACC Tournament Championship game a year ago. Yeah, 31 points, won the MVP. Ooh! Padula with a crossover. Bazzilli into traffic. A scrap for that, one-hander. And it rolls in and from the buzzer. 72-67. He has 22. Grant Bazzelli was not a part of that matchup a year ago. He wants his own win versus the Blue Devils. Long one coming and off the back iron there by Roach. This big crowd ready to roar tonight. OB. As great as Filipowski's been, he is visibly gassed. He has worked hard in his second half, has not had a break. One-hander by Collins. No. Duke comes away with the board. Grandison there. As we approach five minutes to go, Kansas and Baylor to follow tonight. Filipowski coming out high. Proctor on the drive. No. Young will feed it back to him in the corner. Another fight for the rebound, and it'll be Hokies basketball. 4.48 remaining. We talked about it would be about the inside game. Well, Hunter Couture proved me wrong, making sure he knows he will have something to say about this one. Ordinary plays, colossal dunks, your favorite players and teams. Stream on your favorite devices and run the floor with even more coverage from NBA TV and videos on demand. Watch up to eight games on one screen. Get our half-season special offer when you order NBA League Pass today on DirecTV. Kev Fons and coach, Wisconsin Northwestern, a makeup of a COVID cancellation. How about the cut and layup from Brooks? Barnheiser to give the Cats a big time win. Northwestern's building an NCAA tournament resume one win at a time. That was their fifth, their fifth Big Ten win. Up next, Kansas going to have to deal with one tough backcourt, Fonz. Yeah, the Big 12 leader in three point field goal percentage and three pointers made, Adam Flagler. Top 20 battle in the on deck circle will be. Kev, thank you very much. 72 67. Virginia Tech hasn't won a basketball game in about five weeks. And on top of Duke at the moment, here at Castle Coliseum. Here's Couture as he gets going again. Just made a three a moment ago. And Duke dodging a bullet with that possession. Miscommunication defensively giving Hunter Couture a wide open look. Just unable to knock it down. Duke has missed their last four shots. Roach trying to put an end to that. Here's Proctor. Can't hit the three. And Duke has gone cold here. Inside the five minute mark, almost four minutes to go. And Padula will take his time and set it up now for Mike Young. And they'll run some motion. Here's Collins. Rebound comes out high. And Duke wants to run. It's Filipowski ahead of everybody again. And a blocking foul. That'll go on Collins. Trying to stop the big fella. And we'll take the break. 347 remaining. 72 67. The Hokies at home on top of Duke. Just lit it up. Game winning threes. Maddox was incredible. Couture was amazing. And they worked their way through that tournament. When everyone was kind of looking the other way, but here came the Hokies, and eventually they would play their way against North Carolina, 
Knock them off 72 59 the semifinal. Take on the Duke Blue Devils on that Saturday in the final. And winning four games in a row, and more importantly, knocking off North Carolina and Duke on your way to the championship game and on the way to holding the first ever ACC tournament championship for Mike Young for the Virginia Tech Hokies. A special time for these Hokies a year ago. So they know they can do it. They've dug themselves a hole this year too. Filipowski making number one. Last year they were two and seven. They beat FSU on the road that turned everything for them. Now they're one and seven. Will tonight be the night where they flip the switch? And two for the big. He continues to have a great night. He's 28. And that ties his career high, the freshman. Duke coming out with some full court pressure to see if they can speed up the Hokies quite a bit. And Obi, as we get further into this game, I got to make sure that we say a happy College Sports Communicators Annual Membership Appreciation Week. So we make send a shout out to all the sports information directors throughout the ACC that make this game so great for us. And a special birthday shout out. Yeah, to Mike DeGeorge, who is the great guy at SID for the Duke Blue Devils for the basketball team. Mike turning I think he said 23 today <laughs> with maybe that maybe the, maybe the uh, 21st anniversary of his 23rd birthday He's a, there's I got Mike outstanding does a great <laughs> great job our best to Mike and a happy birthday Filipowski on the drive and it's blocked by Bazzilli great timing there and he gets it back to and Derek Lively getting his hands on the basketball but there are small things that's one you've got to be able to corral and maintain that possession for your team 72 69 Bazzilli down the lane fouled before the slam so no basket as he was held up 306 left so Bazzilli to the line and coming up next on ESPN we take it to Waco for 17 Baylor squaring off against number nine Kansas with Book Shambi and Jay Billis. Book. You and Book get together and talk about baseball? Uh, we've been known to. You have not been known just to. Just a little bit. We go back a long, long way to our Marlins days. You know, Book actually introduced me to Coach Ross. Well, David Ross, we flew back together from Tallahassee. Uh, Coach Ross is actually a Knowles fan, believe it or not. Spend some time in Tallahassee in the offseason. We had him in Boston. He did a great job for us catching. That's before he was a manager. He's done a pretty good job there, too. Here's Proctor outside the three, now inside. Under three minutes to go. Roach. Proctor again. Shot clock at five. Proctor with the kick young the other side of the rim for two and great recognition by young He's not the athlete that Basile is so he used the other side of the basket the reverse layup to get the shore to a big bucket For Ryan young so it's a big hoops tonight He has eight Basile slapped away by Filipowski Great work there, but it's gonna be a blocking foul as Roach did a terrific job to keep that alive and keep the basketball from going out of play. And it was a smart play by Padula to try to get the charge on that possession, but I do think this was the right call. You have to be able to give someone an opportunity to change direction. And right there, you see Jeremy Roach did not have that opportunity as Ryan Young continues to work for the basketball and finds the right position, but avoids the shot blocking of Bazzilli by using the opposite side of the rim. Got a timeout here as Roach went to the line for a one and one. It's a 30 second break. We're coming right down to the end. 2.17 to play. The Hokies by three. For Mike Young and John Shire going head to head as we give you the reset. Duke has the possession arrow. Both head coaches with two timeouts. Mike Young has been coaching as long as John Shire has been alive. However, in his fourth season at Virginia Tech, Mike Young is two and three versus the Blue Devils. And John Shire's first attempt against the Hokies against his hostile environment. And now his team with an opportunity to make it a one point game at the free throw line. Roach at the line and missed the front end. Duke usually very reliable at the line. Jeremy's sister not happy 
with the free throw miss right there, encouraging Big Bro. Approaching the two minute mark. Mutz doubled up. Eight to get off a shot. Mutz on the move to the lane. Bazzilli came up with it, but misfired underneath. Duke has missed their last six threes. Filipowski going in close. Went to the bank shot, drew the foul. Well, you know, you're talking about the parents and how they watch every single move. It's an emotional roller coaster for parents throughout this game. You see Carol getting down in her own defensive stance, watching Jeremy go to the basket. Car Carol's been doing that since he was two. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Filipowski off the front iron, Duke missing their shot, 78% at the line as a team, but suddenly the free throws are not going. Made the second. And once again, Kyle Filipowski denies this castle guard, the crowd here at Castle Coliseum Bacon. Duke eight out of 12 at the line. Vasily. Minute 10 to go. Vasily spin. Here's Collins on the baseline. Collins is Mutz and draws the foul. Great recognition by Mutz to cut to the basket, seeing that Collins could be in trouble. But in comparison to standing along the three point line, he dives to the basket. Vasily finds Collins cutting, but you see surrounded by three Blue Devils. And Justin Mutz, a great job cutting to the rim, getting the opportunity and getting to the free throw line. Mitchell's second personal. This has not been a strong suit for the senior from New Jersey, just 67%. And has not made one tonight. And 0 for 4, and these, of course, are huge free throws. You want to try to make it a multiple possession game, but with missing the first one, that wouldn't happen. Right now, you can get it to three. 75-72. And a timeout, John Shire. Timeout. Just over a minute to play. And Duke started out as hot as a firecracker in a 7-0 lead. Virginia Tech came back just as strong. And so here we're coming right down to the bitter end with a minute two to go. And right now, no need to rush a three-point shot. You have more than enough time, a minute two remaining. You want to get the best quality look you can. Probably attacking the basket. Find a way to make something positive happen in the painted area, whether it's a layup or kicking it out to one of your guys for three. But no need to rush right now for the Blue Devils. 75-72. Vazili's been a big reason that Virginia Tech has been able to have this late lead, the Kings of Castle so far. And of course, Filipowski's just been outstanding with 29 points and nine rebounds. Yeah, career high 29 points with Kyle Filipowski. Stepping it up big time here on the road, recognizing how much his team needs him and has answered the bell each and every time for the Blue Devils. We look at our game reset right now. Still two timeouts remaining for Virginia Tech, only one for the Blue Devils. Both teams in the bonus, and the Blue Devils right now looking to get some points on the board to either tie or make this a one-point one game. Now, both of these teams coming off games that came down to the last shot on Saturday. Duke put a big win over Miami at home. Virginia Tech lost by one point against Clemson. Roach down to 47 seconds to go. 10 to get off a shot. They want Filipowski to take one, but he can't. Proctor will. He drains a triple, and he ties the game. But a shot within the flow of the offense, off dribble penetration. Filipowski, we've talked about him being able to make plays off the bounce. 
but has the poise and presence of mind not to take a bad shot. And Tyrese Proctor, we've talked about him growing up in the moment and finds his teammate as Proctor steps up, make a big three to tie the game as the brotherhood on the sidelines excited about their chances here on the road. The Duke had missed six consecutive threes and Proctor's only hitting 26% for the year. Well, and again, as a freshman, you start out, the game is moving 100 miles per hour. But right now, you can see for Filipowski, who got off to a great start during his freshman year, but for Proctor, it's starting to slow down for him now. He started back in the, uh, the starting lineup, and now as a point guard, he's handling the basketball a lot more, but still poised enough to be able to make plays at the end and stepping up and knocking down a huge three to tie the game. We get a look at Derek Whitehead on crutches, out cheering on his team. Hate to see this for this young man, but still involved in the mix and wanting to make sure his team gets a road win. He can't not look, right? He's got to come out and watch the end of this thing with the ice there on the lower leg. 75, 75, 35 seconds to go. So now you're Mike Young. You've got the basketball. Well, right now you have no need to rush. 26 seconds remaining on the shot clock. You don't want to do anything too quick. So, but right now, the way the Hunter Couture has been shooting the basketball, you want to allow him to be an option. But Grant Basile, in my question, is in my opinion, is the guy right now simply because he's been able to attack the painted area, finish around the rim, and get to the free throw line and make his free throw attempts when he gets those chances. Basile is 6'9 grad, the transfer from Wright State. Hokies, by the way, without a field goal in the last five minutes and 25 seconds. The Blue Devils have been locking them up defensively. And right into a 75-75 tie. Hokies 10 out of 19 from three-point land though tonight. Here's Basili. 20 seconds to go. Handoff for Couture. Couture with a bounce speed. Here's Collins. Collins with a pull up. Got it! With 13 seconds to go. And they're going to have to maybe look at the clock here as well. 12.4 to go. Filipowski taking a hit. Looks like in the throat area. Also got what looks to be blood on the knee. It's been that type of night for Kyle Filipowski. He's played great. But he's been beat up also. We've seen him on the ground a number of times throughout this one. You see the blood on the knee. MJ Collins making the two point basket and a fist pump that accidentally catches Kyle Filipowski in the neck. Oh, on the celebration. And the, and the officials going over to look at that to make sure that it wasn't anything that would be considered flagrant. I don't even know that Collins had any idea Filipowski was right there. He was celebrating, making a big bucket. Turns around for the fist pump. But Filipowski wow. takes it right in the neck. Keith Kimball right there on top of it. It's like he's in the ring taking a shot. If Kissinger. And Keith Kimball and Terry Oglesby, the officials, they're not going to say, as you said, it was anything flagrant, nothing on purpose there. It was in the act of the celebration. Unfortunately for Filipowski. Unfortunately for Filipowski, but again, that's one of those things that you go over to the bench, you shake it off, but it continues to get your blood boiling. And right now, there's no one who wants to get a big bucket as Filipowski oh, takes that square into the net. But there's no one right now who wants a big bucket to win this game more so than Kyle Filipowski. We're also going to reset the clock to 13.6. So they've added more time. The Hokies on top 77 to 75. One more look. And thanks, thanks to our officiating crew. Ooh, that angle right there shows you that's a tough shot Filipowski took. But thanks to our officiating crew, Terry Oglesby, of course, Keith Kimball, Kip Kissinger coming over and letting us know it was deemed incidental because it was celebratory yeah. and it was nothing intentional on that. Filipowski just in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
So Collins hits a big shot and then hits Filipowski unintentionally. Right in the throat. So 13.6 to go. And Mark Mitchell will put it in here for the Blue Devils. We'll see if Filipowski has had a spectacular game can recover here and be a factor at the end. Proctor for Filipowski. Proctor will launch a long one. It's short. Rebounded by Collins with 3.6 seconds to go. And the Hokies less than four seconds from breaking a seven game losing skill. Free throws of utmost importance at this point. 3.6 seconds is an eternity in a basketball game to be able to get a quality look for the Blue Devils, which makes these free throws very important. If you're Virginia Tech, you want this to be a four-point game when it's all said and done, not leaving any opportunities for the Blue Devils to tie or win it by missing a free throw or missing both. Okies are seven for nine at the foul line in the second half. Duke had started to head back over to John Shire. Now they're called back by the officials 3.9 now. And it'll be Collins to the line. He's had some major moments in this game. Officials checking the clock, make sure they got it right. 3.9 remaining. And Duke still has a timeout. Collins, an 80% foul shooter. Freshman from South Carolina. Pretty smooth on that one, just like his jumper. And that is a big free throw because now the most that you can do is tie the basketball game and send it into overtime if they are able to knock down the three. This one right here can be the dagger. Collins, a four-star recruit. One of the top players coming out of South Carolina. And looking to put the Hokies on top by four. And he does not. And a timeout. Filipowski with a rebound. 3.2 to go. The door is still open, my friend. When you consider how important free throws are at this stretch of the game, no one dealing with more stress right now than Mike Young. <laughs> Recognizing, trying to figure out how, whether you have to foul at this point as soon as they catch the basketball and put the Blue Devils on the free throw line or if you allow them to play it out. Now we'll take a look at the Capital One rewarding performance tonight. That rewarding performance coming from a number of Hokies, but Grant Vasily has stood out amongst them all. Offensively, defensively coming up, block shots, rebound the basketball, and he has been significant for the Hokies here tonight, looking to break that seven-game losing streak if they can stop the Blue Devils on one last possession. 24 points for Vasily and eight rebounds, 10 out of 15 shooting, and a lot of really gritty hard work in the paint. It absolutely has been that for him. He has matched the toughness of the Blue Devils in the painted area, taking the basketball to the rim a number of times, finishing it off. Of course, only one or two from beyond the three-point arc in this game where he normally makes his mark. So for Duke, who takes the shot? Kyle Filipowski. It's not even close. I mean, again, right now you want to find a way. And again, at, at seven foot, he's really your biggest receiver. And what I would expect right now is to be able to throw the ball long and find a way to have him come up and catch it and be able to fire a three. He would be the guy that I would suggest will be the one catching this. And a timeout for the Hokies. Mike Young will take one here. 78 to 75. And had to do it, the Blue Devils, for a big chunk of the second half without Whitehead. Let's check in with Kevin Studio. All right, OB, want to let you know that Kansas Baylor is about to start right now over on ESPN News. Grady Dick and the Jayhawks, two consecutive losses. Gigantic battle in Waco tonight. Top 20 showdown. 
Big one of the Big 12, but aren't they all? You'll see it starting on ESPN News and then next year on ESPN and over on ESPN Plus. Big time hockey night matchup with an emotional twist. Johnny Gaudreau, Gaudreau longtime superstar with the Calgary Flames, back at the Saddle Dome. Now as a member of the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's on ESPN Plus, OB. Hi, right, Kevin. 78 75. Duke with the basketball with 3.3 seconds to go and trailing by three. Now Couture runs in and pushes Kidd to the bench. <laughs> and Hunter Couture covers the ground. Six Hokies on the floor coming out of the timeout. Hunter Couture sprinting over. That's leadership right there, OB. So nobody on Young as he inbounds. Gets it and knocked away. Couture with the theft. And they win it. 78-75. Couture had a huge hand in it. And he had the biggest hand in the end. As Duke fails to get off a shot. And the Hokies end a seven game skid. They had not won since the middle of December. Virginia Tech, five and one in their last six matchups with the Blue Devils in Castle Coliseum.